Okay. So for today, we will continue with the immune response. Basically, we're going to look at the memory cells that are produced during immune response. Okay. B, the humoral immune response, where B cells are activated, or cell mediated response, where T killer cells are activated. So in today's lesson, we're going to explain the role of memory cells in the secondary immune response, as well as long-term immunity. And then we're going to describe the differences between active and passive natural and artificial immunity. So today you've got a lot of opportunity to collect points uh, for the second part here because a lot of examples will be given to you. All right. Uh, we are not going to touch this third part, which is vaccine, because vaccine is a, a huge topic that we will touch in a separate lesson. All right. So this vaccine will be in a separate lesson. So firstly, explain the role of memory cells in the secondary immune response as well as long-term immunity. So this is called immunological memory, right? So remember when you learn about the uh, specific immune response, right? You, throughout the entire process, starting from the infection, followed by phagocytosis, followed by antigen presentation of the macrophage, followed by clonal selection of T helper cell and B cell, clonal expansion of T helper cell to active T helper cell and memory cells, and then active T helper cells secrete cytokines, activating the selected B, help, uh, selected B cells to undergo clonal expansion, where the cell divide by mitosis and differentiate into uh, plasma cells and B cell memory cells, and then plasma cells secrete antibody. So in this entire process that we learn, we know that memory cells for T helper cells, memory cells for B cell, as well as memory cells for TK cells will be produced. So today we're focusing on what is the function of the memory cells. So memory cells function is to provide long-term immunity. Okay, so this is a key word, this is one mark in the exam, is to provide long-term immunity. Long-term means, um, when you are infected by that particular pathogen, your body will remember it. So that means your body in the first round already totally removed the pathogen. But you have got these memory cells left in your body so that subsequently, next time when you encounter the same type of pathogen, your immune system can remember the pathogen. And because of that, start, starting from the memory cells, which can remember the pathogen because it's got receptor that is specific to the pathogen. The moment it encounters the pathogen, that means when the pathogen enters and then it encounters the antigen of the pathogen, it will straight away respond so that it will produce. So it is very fast response. Okay, I will say faster response. You have got faster response as well as higher concentration of antibody will be produced. So this is called the uh, secondary immune response. Okay, Primary immune response is the first time. Primary immune, uh, immune, immune response is your body is exposed to that pathogen for the first time. So it's primary immune response. So um, an immune response has been launched by your immune systems against the pathogen, the very first time your body encounter that non-self antigen or the foreign antigen of the pathogen. So the first time your immune system is um, exposed to that particular foreign antigen or self antigen and launch an, um, launch an immune response is called primary immune response. Secondary immune response is when your immune system encounter the same foreign antigen or the same non-self antigen in the subsequent infection, right? Subsequent means after the first time, the second time onwards is called subsequent, okay? In the subsequent exposure to the same antigen, 
it will launch a secondary immune immune response. Okay, so secondary is subsequent. Uh, immune response against subsequent infection, subsequent exposure to the same antigen. Okay, so that one, during your secondary immune response, the normal steps will also happen. That means the phagocytosis will happen, okay? Antigen presentation will happen, clonal selection will happen. All these things will happen as usual. So this is the usual step that all these steps here, okay, they are going to happen, all of them here, okay? Everything. But on top of this, there is one more that will happen that's not here, which is starting from memory cells. Okay, starting from memory cells, it will also uh, respond to that foreign antigen. So what does this uh, memory cells do here is the moment memory cells encounter that same type of antigen, straight away, it will undergo clonal expansion. Let me straight away, it will. Can you tell me uh, what are the two processes that involve in clonal expansion, Etna? In clonal expansion, what are the two processes involved? Ebner? So we see recording. So upon exposure to, for, to the same antigen, clonal expansion of memory cells will happen, which means to say the memory cells will divide by mitosis and then it will differentiate into more plasma cells and more memory cells. So these plasma cells will then secrete antibody. And this antibody can quickly bind to the antigen of the uh, pathogen. And then there are six possible, six possible ways to remove the pathogen, right? So can you tell me what are the six possible ways? At least tell me one, right? Lo Wen Tao. Uh... Okay, let me try to tell all six. Only one give me one enough. Okay. Give me one okay. enough. It's fine too. Uh, huh? antibody, antibody, right? Uh, they bind to the this inhibit movement of bacteria. Yes, bind to which part of bacteria? Magellan. Very eyes. good. Okay, very good. Next, can I have Gia? No Gia, okay. Yeah, um, I'm here. Yes. Um, not sure. Second way. So the main thing we want to achieve is in the memory cells provide long-term immunity so that when the same antigen is being encountered, it will give us a faster response and higher concentration of antibody. Okay, now, why faster is I already show you because apart from the normal pathway of causing antibody to be produced, which is so long, right? It takes such a long time for all these processes to happen here. Slow, isn't it? So now there's a shortcut where the, immediately when memory cells is exposed to antigen, it can already undergo clonal expansion without waiting for the instruction from the T helper cell. You see, it doesn't have to wait for T helper cell. So straight away, it will divide and differentiate. So therefore, the production of antibody become faster, All right? Now, what about explaining why the antibody concentration becomes higher? Is because, you see, if you start from one B cell, let's say B2 cell is being selected. So let's say, for example, one cell is being selected and undergo clonal expansion. So when it undergo clonal expansion, say, for example, it produces, um, it produces 10, so after cell division, uh, it produces 10 memory cells and 10, uh, 10 plasma cells here, okay? 10 plasma cells here. So start in your primary immune response, you only activate, let's say, one B cell against that particular antigen. But in your secondary immune response, how many memory cells do you start with? Maria. Um, three. Where got three? 
<laughs> open to the floor. How many memory cells do you start with? Yes, her Cheng Han, very good. 10. I just said 10, right? Okay. 10. I said, say for example, only, huh? because after the cell divide, it can produce more cells and differentiate into 10 memory cells. So now in primary immune response, you only got one cell to divide and differentiate to produce, to produce uh, plasma cells and antibody. But now if you start with one memory cells, may I ask you, after the cell divide and differentiate, how many plasma cells will you get open to the floor? Lo Wen Tao, correct. This is mathematics. Am I recording? Not right? Mathematics. Yeah, I'm recording. 100. Very good. One cell divide to produce 10 cells. So 10 cells divide to produce 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Very good, Lo Wen Tao. So now you got 100. You ask me how, so I'm explaining how already. Mahi Jai, so you get it? One cell divide gives you 10 cells. So 10 cells divide, you have to times 10, right? It will give you 100 cells. Okay? Smart means smart, right? So 100 plasma cells secreting antibody versus 10 cells secreting antibody. Of course, 100 cells will secrete 10 times more of this, correct? So that's why the concentration of antibodies secreted during the secondary immune response is much higher than from primary immune response. Okay, so this is actually higher. Okay, so this is our secondary immune response. If you want to put it in the terms of graph, please pull this out from your um, PowerPoint notes because your PowerPoint notes is a graph with no words. You need to fill in the words yourself now. Okay, you need to fill in the words. Huh? All right. So, Every time you get a graph, you must first check the y-axis and x-axis. So y-axis is the antibody concentration in the serum. In the serum. Okay, that means what? Okay, can you tell me what is serum? Huh? What is serum? What is the difference between serum and blood? Zi qi. It's the blood. Plasma yeah. without the uh, immunoglobulin. Very good. Blood plasma minus fibrinogen. No, not immunoglobulin. Blood plasma minus fibrinogen, okay? Oh, no, ma. Anyway, so remember serum is, serum is the liquid that's left in the test tube. After you withdraw the blood and leave your blood in the test tube for a long time, so it's exposed to the air, Fibrinogen will solidify, becomes fibrin. Whatever liquid left is called the serum. Okay, so the serum will still contain all the soluble chemicals, including antibodies. So therefore, then you take it to test it for antibodies, right? So therefore, antibodies contained in the serum. Then in number of days, so on day zero is the first antigen injection. That means in this example, antigen, the foreign antigen is injected to the 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 person's body. So this, you can actually take this as you're injecting the COVID, uh, COVID vaccine, huh? because COVID vaccine will contain the viral antigen. Viral antigen is any form of macromolecule of the virus that can stimulate your immune response. So that's why it's called um, uh, the antigen, right? Antigen is any macromolecules that can cause uh, can stimulate your immune response. So in the COVID vaccine, we are injecting the viral antigen into your body. So during the first injection, your body will be exposed to that antigen. At that time, we know that the primary immune response already activated here. Because at this time is when there is a phagocytosis. Okay, followed by antigen presentation. Followed by 
clonal selection plus clonal expansion and then followed by antibody production. Okay, so therefore you see that there is, it takes a long time before antibody can be produced finally. And hence, that's why you see over here, the level of antibody remains zero. So that is called the window period. Please remember, window period is the period of time when the person is already infected, but antibody is not produced yet because there's a delay for all these processes to happen before antibody can be produced. That's why it's called window period. So after window period is when the antibody is secreted already. So therefore, the concentration of antibody will start to increase. Okay. But after that, it will also drop. Right. It drops because the antibody binds to the antigen and then it will be removed by phagocytes. So therefore, when antibody concentration drop, remember, I always tell you, when concentration of something drops or when the total number of cells drop, you have to look you have to explain in terms of input, either input has decreased or no more, and then output, output is still continue, okay? Uh, I, know, I cannot say increase, but I can say it continues. So what is the input of antibody we need? Yes. What is the input of antibody? What gives the antibody? What gives the antibody? So you mean produce or what gives the antibody? What? What is causing? What is? What can cause antibody concentration to increase? Therefore, you imagine antibody culture as the bank, right? How come the money in your bank account can increase? Must be somebody put the money into the bank, right? So who or what put the antibody into your serum? Plasma cell. Yes, very good. Plasma cell. So input comes from plasma cell. Plasma cell. Okay. So input comes from plasma cell. So when the antibody concentration increases, it's because plasma cells die. The plasma cells, after they secrete antibody, they don't live very long, they will die. So when they die, there's no more plasma cell to secrete antibody. So there's no more input, okay? But there is still an output because antibody starts to bind to the ant antigen and then it continues to be removed by phagocytes. So there's an output. That means someone is going and take away the money from the bank. So therefore, the money in the bank account will drop. So in this case, concentration antibody will drop because someone is removing the antibody from the serum. So what is that someone? The phagocytes. So therefore, why antibody concentration drop is because number one, plasma cells die. Number two, the antibody antigen complex is being phagocytosed because antibody bind to antigen. And this whole thing is being phagocytosed. So that's why the concentration antibody can drop one with time. Okay. So uh, you see, when you take the COVID vaccine, right? Uh, there are some news that there are some news that says that you need to go and test whether the vaccination is effective, isn't it? So when they say you need to go and test whether vaccination is effective, what they will test is they'll test for your concentration of antibody. Because the moment you've got antibody being produced, it is an indication that plasma cells are already being produced, right? Because plasma cells are the one that produce antibody, right? So if plasma cells are being produced, that means to say my memory cells are being produced. So by checking the concentration of antibody is an indication of how much plasma cells are produced, which is an indication of how much memory cells are produced. So we are more concerned about memory cells here because it is the memory cells that will give us our long-term immunity. Okay, so, but we cannot check memory cells, very difficult to check. So the easiest way to check, of course, is antibody because antibody is secreted 
and then it circulates throughout our body. So it's very easy to just withdraw the blood and test for it if it's present. So it's easier for us to test antibody than to test the memory cells. So that's why we test antibody, even though what we want to know is actually uh, do have, have the body responded, have our bodies responded to that antigen of the vaccine and hence produce memory cells or not. Uh, okay, so we test for the antibody. All right. Okay, so next, huh? so this is the subsequent antigen injection. This is called the booster dose, right? Because um, usually, you know, most of us will take two jabs, isn't it? So this is the second jab. So why do we need the second jab? It's because the booster dose is to increase the number of memory cells because from one B cells, it produces 10 memory cells. Now, when you ex so this is one, mem when one B cells exposed to the antigen. Activated will produce 10 memory cells. 10 memory cells exposed to the same antigen, so the second time inject to your body. 10 memory cells will produce 100 memory cells. So of course, 100 memory cells circulating in your body is better than 10 because 10 100 memory cells um, in your body, when exposed to the antigen, it will divide and differentiate into how many? Uh? 1,000 memory cells that's secreting antibody, right? So which means to say you have got even higher concentration of antibody after your booster dose. Okay? Versus, sorry, yeah. Uh, this is the first time. This is your booster dose. After your booster dose, you will have 100 memory cells versus 10. So that next time, if you're really being exposed to the antigen here, uh, then your body is going to produce 1,000 um, 1, plasma cells, which will be able to secrete more antibody versus your 100 memory cells that will only divide and differentiate to produce 100 plasma cells. Okay? So 100 plasma cells will also secrete antibody, but it will secrete less, right? Versus the 1,000 plasma cells. That's why we want to give a booster dose so that more memory cells are being produced so that next time, if you're really exposed to that antigen, your 100 memory cells will be activated. When they divide, it will divide to produce even more plasma cells. It will produce even more antibody compared to if you don't take booster dose, you only have 10 memory cells to divide and differentiate to produce only 100 plasma cells versus 1,000 plasma cells. Of course, after booster dose is better because your concentrated antibody produced is, can you see is so much higher here, right? This extra layer, this extra height versus original one here. So this is during your booster dose. So next time, uh, even booster dose, second jab already produce more, showing that more memory cells, okay? More memory cells are being activated versus your original B cells, okay? So over here, you only got B cells that are being activated over here, okay? Only B cell, so one B cell. One B cell divide to produce 10 memory cells. So over here, what is being activated is two. Uh, you got the normal B cell that will be activated as usual. And then you got your memory cells. How many? You got 10 here. 10 memory cells. Okay. So now after booster dose, you got 10 memory cells. So next time, if you're really, really, let's say somewhere here after a long, long time. So your body is exposed to the antigen, right? So now you have got 100 memory cells to divide and differentiate. So it will produce, am I right? No, am I right? No, 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 I'm not correct. Sorry, I'm not correct. I've got 10 memory cells being produced here during this primary immune response. Okay, I've got 10 memory cells. So. During booster dose, these 10, 10 memory cells will divide and differentiate to produce 100 memory cells, correct? So that's correct already, okay? So in the subsequent exposure here, 
This 100 memory cells will be activated to divide and differentiate. It will give you 1,000 memory cells and 1,000 plasma cells. So this 1,000 plasma cells will secrete antibody so much higher in concentration versus this, um, <clears throat> versus this, um, this level here. Okay, it's even higher. Okay, so that's why you need to take booster dose. Huh? So let's look at what you need to write in this graph, right? So the graph has got effect, that means describing the, the curve and reason means to explain. So these are the two things that you always have to pay attention to when a graph is given. Number one is to describe the graph and number two is to explain the graph. Okay, so describe the graph. So uh, the first stage here is the primary immune response when the body is first exposed to the foreign antigen. This one is a secondary immune response. It's a subsequent exposure after the first one. Subsequent exposure to the same antigen after the first exposure. Okay, so during primary immune response, the immune response is very slow antibody production and lower level antibody production. And because of that, this person will be sick with symptom. So it's infected, of course, infected with symptom. Symptom means signs and symptom means the person will get sick. Okay, so the person will be sick, right? Because the production antibody is very slow and also very low in level. So why is it slow? It's because, so this one will explain this one here, number one. Slow because the T helper cells needs to undergo clonal selection, clonal expansion before the B cells can undergo clonal expansion. So there's a delay until antibody can be produced by the plasma cells. Okay. So, and then how come uh, the concentration of antibody produced is low? It's because we have got less B cells to start with at the beginning. All right. So, what about our secondary immune response? Secondary immune response. The, the production of antibody is very fast. So rapid antibody production. And then number two, more antibody being produced. So because of rapid and more, these two things combined together, therefore this person can be infected, but no symptoms, no reservoir, no transmission. These are the three words you need to memorize. Whenever you take vaccination, what you want to achieve is no symptom, no reservoir, no transmission. Okay, that means if you catch the COVID virus, you will not only not get sick because no symptom, you will not be the reservoir carrying the COVID virus and then moving around and spreading to other people because your body can kill all of them and remove all of them. So you are not a reservoir. Because of that, you will not transmit it to, to, to other people. So this is exactly what we want to achieve when we give vaccination. Not only infection without symptom, but most importantly, why it can prevent it from spreading. Like for example, here, right? After there's a mass um, vaccination, you can see that the number of cases is under control already. It doesn't continue to increase at like last time before the massive um, vaccination, right? So why is it being controlled? Uh, it's because no reservoir and no transmission. So vaccination is trying to achieve all these three here, which is so important, right? So please memorize. Infection without symptoms, reservoir, and transmission is what we want to achieve with vaccination, okay? So uh, when you take booster dose, it's further increase the number of memory cells so that there's even higher concentration of antibody being produced, okay? So, and then because the antibody concentration is very high, it will actually last longer. Right, because it takes a longer time to actually go down to zero at the same rate as this one going down. Right, it'll take a longer time. So antibody level will last longer. So reason to explain why it is faster because uh, bypass number one means to say that it doesn't have to start from phagocytosis, antigen presentation, clonal selection, clonal expansion during the primary immune response, right? It can straight away start from memory cells straight away divide and differentiate to produce plasma cells and secret antibody, so it's faster, right? Then uh, higher concentration of antibody being produced because uh, the number of memory cells to start with is more than the number of B cells to start with, okay? The number of memory cells to start with in secondary immune response is more than the number of 
B cells to start with in our primary immune response. So that's why the concentration of antibody produced is higher. Okay. Now you don't have to, to, to learn about all. Oh, this is IgM, not this IgG, because IgM, IgG not in a silver, so just have to ignore all of them. Just know the level will do. Right? Okay, so very easy, right? Okay, so next quiz. Why can memory cells persist for a long time in a body? We have to thank our APC cell. APC cell. All right. So APC is what? Antigen presenting cell. Antigen presenting cell retain the antigen and continuously move around the body to expose that antigen to the memory cells. So therefore, uh, when the memory cells are exposed to antigen, it will divide and differentiate to form more memory cells as well as plasma cells. So that's why our memory cells continue to remain uh, in our body. Okay, because the old memory cells can die, but our body keep on producing new memory cells. So that's why memory cells will always be there. Okay, but the question here now is, all right, if we have got memory cells, why do we repeatedly suffer, suffer from influenza? So this one we have done the question yesterday already, right? Okay, uh, this is because of antigenic variation. Variation means, yes, there are, there, there are different strains of virus that can cause common cold. So different strains okay, of rhinovirus that can cause flu. So that's why this is called antigenic variation because different strain has got different antigen. So this is called antigenic variation. It's a biological term, right? So you learn up this term, you write this term, you get one mark in exam, okay? So that's the reason why a person can still get sick because every time you've got different strain enter, you must start from zero, primary immune response. Production of antibody is very slow, right? Production antibody is very slow and also lower concentration antibody being secreted. So that's why this person is infected and can have symptoms rather than infected without symptom trans, uh, uh, reservoir and transmission. Okay. So nowadays I hear what people say, oh, yeah, I don't want to take the booster, booster dose uh, that people say. So I ask, why don't you take? What's the reason don't you take? Just because the friend said don't take. And then my, my mother said don't you take. <laughs> I asked her, why you don't want to take? Especially she moved around very actively. Right? Okay, better take. <laughs> no reason don't want to take. <laughs> All right, okay, next. Ah, so type of immunity. Um, so let's look at the type of immunity. 